we have to be aware that, that mediocrity always attacks excellence. One of the arts that have been lost in our world is the art of listening. A lot of people are just run by what others are thinking about them rather than what their soul wants. Yeah. Is it possible to life vision when you're at the bottom? Not only is it possible, that's probably the best time to do it. Need motivation? Watch the top 10 with Believe Nation. Top 10, top 10 I got a top 10. 10, top 10. Got my motivation high for my top 10. Top 10. Top 10. Gotta learn from the wise women and men. He's Michael Bernard back with, and here's my take on his top 10 rules of success. Enjoy. People have a tendency to care more about what other people are thinking about them than what their soul wants. And so they live from, mm. oh, what is so-and-so gonna think of me? And what's my mother gonna think of me? And what's the society's gonna think of me? And inside, everyone has a destiny, bright, beautiful destiny. The soul is calling us to, to greatness, your name of your show, mm -hmm. you know, uh, to be great beings, to be great lights, to live fully. And oftentimes people will dim their light mm -hmm. in order to fit into someone else's paradigm and end up with crisis, end up with disease, end up with prolonged sadness. Yeah. When if you just step out of that, there's so much life to live. You see, so I think a lot of people are just run by what others are thinking about them rather than what their soul wants. Yeah. Rule number two, ask empowering questions. I think about people who have circumstances that aren't as good as mine or yours. Is it possible to life vision when you're at the bottom? Not only is it possible, that's probably the best time to do it. When circumstances and situations are pressing in upon us, the only way we can overcome them is to go within, to actually begin to ask very empowering questions with the awareness that this universal presence and its law will answer any question that you ask. So if you're in a situation that uh, is pressing on you and you ask, what's trying to emerge in my life? What is my gift to share? Mm. What is my purpose? Why am I here on the planet? Not just how can I pay my rent, not just how can I stop the pain, which aren't bad questions. And not even, not just even what should I do. Not even what should I do. Not what should I do, no. but the universal questions. You, you ask empowering questions, the universe will answer these questions in a language and in a way that you can understand. There'll be inner prompting, there'll be intuitive hits, nudges, signs, symbols, dreams. It'll come in the language of the, own, the, the, the individual soul and heart. The difficulty is that when people are in tough situations, they ask disempowering questions. Whoa. They say, what's wrong? Mm -hmm. Who's to blame? Yeah. Why, Why me? me? Yes. Those are the disempowering questions. So the universe will answer those too. It'll pull on the database of human experience and say, you were born on the wrong tri side of the tracks, or you were born on the right side of the tracks, or you, this happened or that happened. It'll give you a, a, a bevy of excuses. But if you ask an empowering question, you'll get an answer to rise above the muck. So it's all about the question, the sincerity of the question, and then the ability and the willingness to, to really listen, to really be available. That, that's where the juice is. And that is available to every human being. Whether an individual is in prison, whether an individual is imprisoned by circumstance, imprisoned in their own mind about an event that happened in their past, it doesn't matter. Once you ask with sincerity, the universe will answer. That's, that's the way it operates. Rule number three, master the art of listening. Now here's the deal. As you begin to ask empowering questions, you begin to ac activate the soul faculty of hearing. One of the arts that have been lost in our world is the art of listening. Individuals fail to listen and they fail to comprehend. Listening is a lost art. You want to bring listening back in your spiritual practice. So in life visioning, as we begin to feel that we're surrounded by a universal presence of divine love, we begin to ask the question, what is the vision for my life? What is the universe 
seeking to express through me? What is the idea that the universe is trying to make as my life? What's trying to emerge? And then we have a moment of pure listening. Without judgment or censorship, we just begin to listen. And that which is called the still, small voice, we begin to understand it be, after a while becomes the only voice. The chatter in the mind, we no longer hear that. We begin to hear what's trying to emerge. Rule number four, constantly grow and evolve. We have to be aware that, that mediocrity always attacks excellence. Ooh. You know, it, it's, it's kind of a rule. No one's attacking a couch potato. Right. No one cares. No one cares. If you're sitting on the couch eating potato chips and getting fat and and doing nothing, no one says anything. Mm -hmm. But the moment you start to walk toward your dream and you start to break habits, you start to change relationships that no longer serve that dream, you start uh, you start to be talked about. Now, many people um, are afraid of failure, which really means that they're afraid of being ridiculed. Mm -hmm. But once you become aware that you're gonna be ridiculed if you fail and you're gonna be talked about if you succeed, then you can be able to put that aside. Because you know you're gonna be talked about either no way. No matter what, yeah. You know, if you go for it and you fall, oh, he, he went for it and he didn't make it. Or if you go for it and succeed, they'll say, oh, it was luck, you know, you know, whatever they say about you. So once you get out of your mind or become aware that people are going to talk about you either way, then you go for it, you see. And and at the end of the day, you are different because you went for it. That you going for it actually brings out latent powers and gifts and talents within mm -hmm. you that can't come to bloom unless you go for it. So then when you reach your next mountaintop, and mountaintops are endless, yeah. when, you meet, when you reach your next peak, who's with you are the people that are supposed to be with you or could be with you based on what you have become. Now you go for another peak. And then the people that are supposed to be with you there are with you, and all the naysayers. You might, you might shed some people who came with you from the shed first the ballast. Yeah. yeah, some people might come with you to the next mountain, yeah. but some people might be left behind. Right? Absolutely. You keep your heart open. You never just yeah. jettison people out of your life. Your heart is open, but you're constantly growing and unfolding. Also, if you want daily motivation from writers like George R. R. Martin, J.K. Rowling, Paolo Coelho, and others, check out my 254 Writers Wisdom series. The link is in the description below. It's free, and you'll love it. I've been reading a lot of historical fiction, and it might have been in the back of my mind. It's not enough to know what you want. You have to, to do what you want, to be what you want. The knowledge that you have emerged wiser and stronger from setbacks means that you are, ever after, secure in your ability to survive. Rule number five, rise above negative energy. How do you prevent other people's energy from affecting you so much? I can feel when there's toxic energy around, somebody's angry or stressed out, I take that off. Absolutely. You become uninterested in it. You are not interested in what other people are thinking about you. You're only interested in what the universe is thinking about you. And what is the universe thinking about you? that you are, you're a beautiful expression of infinite possibility. And I believe that. You, you do believe I that. I do believe that. You're just sensitive yeah. to other people. So instead of uh, being interested in their vibration, you begin to impute a vibration, that is to give a vibration. So whenever you see negative energy or feeling negative energy, you're going to share love. You, you're gonna give peace from yourself. It's gonna lift your frequency so you become impervious. You, you won't be, be, be touched by the lower vibration. Rule number six, set a worthy goal. Some people have goals that they want to manifest, but the goals have come from the parental fantasies, what their mother wanted them to be when, when they grew up, or their dad, or what the teacher told you you should be, or what your church told you you should be. No, there's something within you. And you want to have a goal that's worthy of that which is within you and that grows you at the same time. So as I'm speaking to you right now, I want you to begin to remember those moments in your life from the time that you could first think as a child, as an infant. There were some ideas that flowed through you. There were some meant-to-be-isms. 
there were some ways that you wanted to challenge yourself to make a difference on the planet. Before you got bombarded with societal fantasies, there was something about you because you know what? You chose to be here. You're not an accident, regardless of what your parents may have told you. You are an on purpose with a purpose. So as I'm speaking to you, you're becoming aware, you're starting to remember that being that knew why he or she arrived on the planet, the gifts they wanted to share, and the difference, here it is, the difference they wanted to make on the planet. You want to make a difference on the planet. That difference you want to make is a goal that's worthy of your soul. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to consider answering this question. What difference do I want to make on the planet before I leave? How do I want the world to be better before I leave? How do I want my relationships, my neighborhood, anything I encounter to be better before I leave? As you are answering that question, you are beginning to bump into the reason why you chose this incarnation. Rule number seven, don't embrace praise or criticism. What's been the biggest challenge for you as a, a human being living a spiritual path over the last you know, 30 plus years? Um, what's been your greatest human challenge? I think just, uh, just dealing with human beings. <laughs> We're complicated people, aren't we? I mean, the, the, it's, 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 it's uh, the best and the worst in the same package. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you see um, human beings that are on the verge of great discovery, you see miracles, you see people coming out of the depths of despair and depression and illness and sickness and uh, addiction, rising. Mm -hmm. And then you see uh, human beings who will criticize and complain and gossip and, and attack, you know, all in the same day. You may get the same deal. You may, you know, and so I've learned to not embrace either one of the imposters, which is praise or criticism. You know, I, I don't run towards praise, I don't run from criticism, and I just don't deal in that area. You mm -hmm. know, I just keep my attention on that which is real and keep moving forward. Rule number eight, shift your vibration. We are vibrational beings. You know, we're not just flesh and blood. You know, uh, if you put anything under a microscope, an intense microscope, you can ultimately see that everything is vibration. And, in, and as the scientists are not telling us, there's information there, but it's not solid, it's always moving. So we're vibrational beings. So as you were just saying, when we lift our vibration to what we want to experience, it happens first on a vibratory level, and then it shows up and manifests in our life. So uh, people who are holding on to rancor, animosity, mm -hmm. they're slowing down their vibration. Okay, just had an aha there. You're actually, when you, when you recognize your vibrational frequency, you're drawing into yourself all the time, literally, the vibration that is most like what you're putting out. Right. Correct? Right, yeah. you cannot, another way of saying is you cannot have what you're not willing to become vibrationally. Ah. If you do get it, you'll lose it. Ah! You see, this is why people, they'll win the lottery, and they, they lose everything, <laughs> yeah. or they'll finally get the person they think they Absolutely. want to be with. They can't keep, the, can't keep the relationship, or they'll get a modicum of success but can't hold on to it, because inside, they weren't vibrationally aligned. They really hadn't become it. So you can temporarily manipulate and get things, but to have it completely, you have to lift your vibration and, and become that. In, in, in vibration. Rule number nine, find your inner greatness. There are things within us that we have no idea that are even there because we've been indoctrinated by the society in which we are living. A high-tech, low-touch society, consumerism, materialism, fear, doubt, worry. And so we visualize what we think we want to be happy. Nothing wrong with that. But beyond that, there's a gift, a talent, a capacity within us all that's trying to emerge. Robert Browning indicated, you know, there's an inner splendor, you know, that's trying to escape. So the visioning process invites the inner splendor to come up that may shock our surface mind. You may 
it may surprise us as to what's trying to emerge and what we must become. And now, outside of our present paradigm, there, the miraculous is there. It's something trying to happen through us and we keep growing and growing. So visualization is a stage of our spiritual growth. It teaches us there's a law in the universe, teaches us the friendliness of the universe. It teaches us that our thoughts transmute themselves into things. It, it, it teaches us that things don't just happen, they happen just. It's a good teaching stage. But then once we become comfortable and realize that the universe is friendly, we can begin to give up control and ask a higher question. And now we lose control, we move into surrender. That's, that's, that's the big game. And rule number 10, the last one before a very special bonus clip is make music. As we're lifted up into the spiritual domain, we begin to see a little bit differently. There's a broadcast going on. This broadcast comes from within you. There's a song singing within you. There is something within you that wants to express. There is something within you that wants to come forward. You are anointed and appointed by the Spirit as the image and likeness of divine and ultimate reality. As we bang in that domain, we bring heaven to earth as a spiritual practice. Wake up and say to yourself, I'm taking an adventure in paradise. And guess what? I'm taking you with me. I'm activating my spiritual stimulus package. I'm taking an adventure in paradise. Now I've got a really special bonus tip from Michael on how to take baby steps that I think you're going to enjoy. But before that, it's time for the three point landing questions. Time to move from just watching a video to taking action in your life or business. Here we go. Question number one, what is your next worthy goal? Number two, what is your inner greatness? And number three, where do you need to do a better job of listening? I am a double lung transplant recipient. It's been over a year now. Well, my problem is right now is, um, is applying my passion and getting over the fear, getting over everything that um, causes me to not right. um, you know, continue forward. What are you afraid of, Tiffany? Success. The success scares me. I've never um, em envisioned anything that God is drawing me to. Yes, so, until now. Until now, okay. yeah. And um, I feel like it's kind of beyond my reach. Okay, so let's look at your past successes. Mm. So you're breathing? Yes. Uh huh. So that was a successful operation. Oh yeah. Do you still have life to give? You still have love to share? You still have success to radiate, right. yes? Yes. Okay, so you're not afraid of it. Mm -hmm. What you're afraid of is the future, okay? okay? So you have somewhere implanted on the future uh, some anxiety around success. Mm -hmm. So I need you to stay right here. I want you to feel the success that you now have experience with the healing of your body temple mm -hmm. and any other uh, aspects of success in your life. I want you to be right here. Now in this feeling of success, I want you to begin to see yourself living the life mm -hmm. that you say God is pulling you to live. And then take baby steps walking in that direction. And every single day, do at least one step. So once you take baby steps, you'll create spiritual, emotional, and soulful movement that will keep carrying you, carrying you, have bigger steps, bigger steps, bigger steps, and you'll see that you're already in the success even before it manifests, even before it shows up, you're already in the feeling of it. Okay. And then when it shows up, it's like, oh, I knew this all along. I was already feeling it. Yeah. If you like this video, check out the top 10 I did on the Dalai Lama. The link is right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. Some say something good person, some say bad person, that doesn't matter. So long, my own motivation for thinking.